this presentation, we will record withdrawals from partners from the partnership. Our information is going to be here on the left side. We will record that into the general journal with journal entries and then post that to our worksheet to see the effect on the trial balance as well as the accounts in it. We have a trial balance that's recorded in terms of assets in green, liabilities in orange. Then we have the capital accounts where we're going to be focusing our time. We have our partners of C, K, and M. And then we've got revenue and expenses. Debits are non-bracketed, credits are bracketed. Zero means that the debits minus the credits are in balance. Net income, 7,000, which is the 10,000, minus the 3,000 to get to that 7,000. We're gonna focus in on here on the partnership, and this is really where it gets a little bit confusing because you'll note that uh, you know, a partnership's capital accounts can get rather long and cumbersome looking because we're going to need, you know, multiple partner capital accounts as opposed to a sole proprietor. And it can even be more intimidating than, than a corporation many times uh, because of the kind of like the, the, the similarities with all the stockholders in a corporation can simplify that, uh, that process a bit as well. So the partnership, we're going to have, like a sole proprietor, a capital account and then a withdrawals account. And that's usually the, the way the trial balance will be set up, meaning uh, if the partnership has investments in the company, we usually just record that in the capital account. Uh, and, but the withdrawals, for whatever reason, because uh, basically because there's gonna be more withdrawals than, than investments, hopefully. <laughs> the withdrawals we typically record in its own account so we can track it separately as time passes. So in other words, you know, it would be nice. We would expect that the that you know, if everything went well, the owner would put in an initial investment into the partnership, and then uh, from that point forward, the partnership would earn revenue, and then the owner would not be putting any more money into the partnership, but would be withdrawing out on a regular basis, and therefore we would want to track the withdrawals in a separate account because there will be significant activity there. And we don't need really a separate account for capital investments, but can just put that into the capital account itself uh, because hopefully there's not going to be that many of them in the future. And uh, so the other thing that goes into the capital account will be when we close out the process. We'll close out revenue and expenses there and we'll close out the draws there. So draws is a funny account then for most people to wrap their head around when we first think about it because uh, it's, it's kind of a capital account, but it's not really on the balance sheet in terms of the financial statements because it's a temporary account, meaning it's really the only one of the only, it's pretty much the only temporary balance sheet account there is that we work with a lot. It's gonna be this draws account or dividends for a corporation, a similar type of, of account, meaning all other temporary accounts that close out are on the income statement and they close out to the capital account and they affect net income. This draws account does not affect net income, but is temporary and will close out to the capital account. And the reason that's the case is because, because it's a draw, it's not, part, it's not an expense. So we wanna make sure we put it up here into the capital accounts. So let's see what that looks like. We got draws for C, K, and uh, M. So C draws out 2,000, so we're just gonna say that uh, cash is gonna go down because C took money out of the company or the partnership. So we're gonna right click on cash, copy. Gonna put that on the bottom in B3, right click and paste one, two, three. The amount in D3 will be a credit, which is a negative 2,000. And then we'll debit something 2,000 in C2 by saying I'm gonna do the negative of this number and enter. So there's the 2,000 there. Now we just need to put that into the to proper account, which will be the C draws account. So we'll copy C withdraws, right click and copy, and put that in B2, right click and paste one, two, three. Now we'll post this out and see what happens. So we're gonna got the C withdrawals here. Here's the C withdrawals on the trial balance. We wanna be in H6, where we will say equals and point to that withdrawals of the 2,000 bringing the balance up from zero to 2,000. Note that the withdrawals is a debit balance account, even though it's in uh, the capital section, that's because it's kind of like a contra capital account, meaning it has a, uh, a balance that's opposite to the normal balance for most capital accounts, and that's because it's bringing capital down, and we had 
uh, owed the company, the company or the business or the partnership owed C $40,000. If C took 2000 out, then the difference is what is still owed, 38 in this case. So when we close this out at the end of the day, at the end of the period, the month or the year, to the capital account, we'll currently we'll have at that point 38,000. Then the other side's gonna go to cash, which is in H2, where we will say equals, point to that 2,000, bringing the balance from 48,000 down by 2,000 to 46,000. Then we've got K's draws. So K drew out 1,000. Once again, is cash affected? We'll say yes, cash is going down. So I'm gonna right click and copy cash. We'll skip a line, skip another line, and put that on the bottom in B6. So within B6, we're gonna say right click and paste one two three then the amount is in d6 where we will say equals or just negative 1000 and then up above it we'll put the debit in c5 negative of this number or you can just type in 1000 but i like to put that little formula in there and then we're going to say that that's going to be uh, k's withdrawals so k's withdrawals right click and copy put that up top right click and paste one two three so here we have case withdrawals are going to go here on the trial balance we're over in h8 where we will say equals and point to that 1000 bringing the balance up from zero by 1000 to 1000 then we've got c uh, the cash so cash is up top something's in it already in h2 therefore we will double click on it go to the end of it say plus and point to the 1000 bringing the balance from 46,000 down by 1,000 to 45,000. So now we've got uh, K's withdrawals here, bringing down the balance. So we owed K 50,000, he took out 1,000, we owe 49,000 at this time. Then we've got M's draws, so 1,500. So again, cash is gonna go down, so we're gonna right click and copy cash. We're gonna skip a line, we're gonna skip another line, put that on the bottom in B9 right click and paste one two three and then we'll go to the right in uh, d9 and we'll put the negative one five zero zero and enter and then we'll put the same amount up top in uh, c8 i'm going to do that with the negative of that number that's going to be the 1500 then we just need to put the amount or the capital account which will be m's withdrawals so m's withdrawals we will right click and copy Put that up top in B8, right click and paste, one, two, three. Now we'll post this out. So M's withdrawals are here. Here's M's withdrawals. We're gonna be in H10 equals, and we'll point to that 1,500 and enter. Bringing the balance from zero up by 1,500 to 1,500. Then we're gonna go up to H2, double click on it, go to the end of it, plus point to that 1,500 and enter. So that brings the balance to 43,500 and we have recorded everything. Note that uh, there's no effect on the income statement here. So no effect on revenue and expenses. That's kind of the point. Um, a mistake would be to pay out the cash and then debit some kind of expense account because that would lower net income improperly. We want to put it into that temporary account, but one which is not part of the net income. And that makes sure that we uh, don't misstate net income and also track the owners uh, what is owed to the owners as we should because uh, we, we want to be very careful to do that properly within a partnership so there's no disagreements within the partnership and we want to document all that uh, as, as much as possible also note that there's a profit sharing of three two one here and that does not necessarily have anything to do with the withdrawals that has to do with how we're going to split the net income. So that it, and unless the partnership agreement says that the withdrawals are limited in some way or must be in accordance with that same ratio, uh, it's not by default typically the case. So meaning the partner can draw whatever they want uh, in theory up to the, their capital account unless restricted by the partners. And of course, you know, the partners are going to want to to keep some type of capital in there and there might be some restrictions or some incentives to do so within the partnership agreements such as uh, having more uh, more of the net income allocated to you if you have more capital investment or just a restriction of a minimum balance or something like that but point being 
is that the withdrawals don't necessarily match the uh, profit sharing amounts for the amount that will be withdrawn.